Welcome everyone uh, to the State of Public Health Practice in the School of Public Health. We're going to be looking at academic year 2020-2021. I'm Lisa McCormick, the Associate Dean for Public Health Practice, and uh, welcome you all here uh, this afternoon. I'm going to make sure you all know who the team is in the Office of Public Health Practice. We're going to talk a little bit about our missions and goal of the Office of Public Health Practice, our strategic plan metrics, um, and then we'll go through those and I'll tell you what we've been able to measure and accomplish in the 2020-2021 academic year. We'll talk about some of our workforce development initiatives that are housed in the Office of Public Health Practice and our communication initiatives. So that is what we're gonna try to do um, to, I guess, accomplish today. So first, just to make sure everyone knows who is in the Office of Public Health Practice. Well, other than myself, we have uh, Ms. Tessa Graham. She's a program manager. Um, she has many duties in the Office of Public Health Practice, including the Get a Handle newsletter, she is one of our staff advisors for the Public Health Student Association. She is the internship coordinator for epidemiology and the career center liaison for the school. Um, in addition to those responsibilities in OPHP, Tessa has some responsibilities in OSAS as far as the interprofessional passport for our MPH students. Um, she helps uh, manage that uh, with some others. And then she is involved in the RIPC, which is the Alabama Regional Center for Infection Prevention and Control that we'll talk about um, in just a few minutes. And then Sabrina Hagen. Sabrina is pretty much the heart of OPHP. Um, she keeps us all moving and flowing. Um, she does our finance and grant administration. She uh, offers logistical support for all of our activities, and she is the Blazer Pulse Liaison for the School of Public Health. She is also involved in a couple of grants, uh, particularly the COVID testing in K-12 schools and the Counteract or Countermeasures Against Chemical Threats, the Research Center of Excellence in our Senecals. And then Luke Hansen, he is the newest member of our team. He came on board last April. So he's almost been with us a year now. Um, Luke is the internship coordinator for health behavior and population health students. He uh, works with Tessa as a staff advisor with the Public Health Student Association and also with the Get a Handle newsletter. He is also involved in a couple of grants, the Superfund Research Center and the ARC IPC. Elena is our program director. Um, in addition to that, she is our internship coordinator for our HPO, and she uh, handles all the RPH practicums. She really does all of our data tracking, uh, monitors our strategic plan metrics, and really um, just makes sure that we're all doing what we're supposed to be doing. Um, in addition to her OPHP activities, She's involved with the Region 4 Public Health Training Center, the ARC IPC, and our newest endeavor, which is the long-term care infection prevention and control strike teams that we're working with ADPH on. And then last but not least, uh, Mina Nabavi, um, another one of our program managers. She is the internship coordinator for environmental health sciences. Um, and she manages all of our OPHP seminars and podcasts. She is also involved in the ARC IPC grant, the Counteract grant, and um, the newest project for her is the Gulf States project that she's working with uh, Jeff Wycliffe and Amy Chatham on. So this is a really busy bunch. Um, and, and, you know, in addition, Tessa, Luke, Elena, and Mina, all TA for different courses. Um, so we really appreciate everything that they do. Our mission and goal really remains the same as I introduced um, last year during our state of uh, practice address. We support the applied and interdisciplinary pursuit of scholarship and public health practice through research, teaching, and service. In order to fulfill this role, role the OPHP focuses on practice-based learning opportunities, co-curricular activities for our students in the school, 
We have our workforce development initiatives, our community engagement initiatives, and our communication and career initiatives. Um, so I'll talk about all of these little boxes as we move through the presentation. There really has not been any change to our strategic plan metrics since our last update. Our public health practice and community engagement pillar metrics are listed here. Um, it's broken down into three objectives. Objective one is to promote and sustain opportunities that enhance the public health practice and service experience of students. And we'll go through these metrics as I go through the presentation. Our second objective is to promote and sustain levels of SOPH faculty practice engagement within the community and to promote and sustain strong connections between academic programs, community partners, and public health practitioners. So I'll talk about all the things that we're doing to allow us to meet those objectives. So let's focus on objective one, which is to promote and sustain opportunities that enhance the public health practice and service experience of students. So on this slide is a summary of the MPH internship numbers for academic year 2020-2021. Over the past year, 177 students completed internships, having completed uh, these in 126 different internship sites, our unique sites, and logged just over 32,400 hours of work for our own behalf of their internship organization. These metrics have been steadily increasing the last three, really four years. Um, EPI and HPO um, have the largest group of students completing internships, but you can see by the year here uh, from 2018 through the 2020-2021 um, year by department and then total there to the, to the very right. Where are our students interning? Well, if we look at the types of industries where our students complete their internships, the top three are academia, followed by hospital clinics and health systems, followed by nonprofit and community-based organizations. I'm really happy with this because over the last few years, we've seen academia getting smaller and the nonprofit and community-based organizations and even health departments growing somewhat. So we're really glad about that. We've been working really hard to encourage our students to get outside of UAB to do their internships. And, um, and slowly we're, we're, we're turning that ship. So our top community partners this last year are in the 2021, uh, 2020, 2021 school academic year was the Alabama Department of Public Health, the Cahaba River Creek Keepers, Alafia House, and Jefferson County Department of Health. And you'll notice pictures on slides as we move throughout of students uh, in action doing their internship. We've, we've asked them to, to send us some uh, appropriate you know, photos that don't show patients or anything inappropriately uh, so that we can highlight those. And they, they've really been sending a lot of photographs in. So we really appreciate that. Now here at UAB, our top uh, internship site in 2020-2021 was the UAB contact tracing unit and then of course the 1917 clinic. We still have a lot of students doing internships there. So very thankful for them. So also, you know, during this year, 124 of the 177 students that completed their internship completed it in the state of Alabama. We had 49 other students complete their internship with organizations outside of Alabama across 25 different states, and four students completed their internships with international organizations in Peru, Canada, India, and Kenya. Now, this number is down, uh, and it has been the last several years, and again, that's because of the COVID-19 pandemic, so keep that in mind, and hopefully as we move forward, we'll see um, those international numbers pick up again once, once students can safely travel. So here on the slide, you'll see images. Mary, who did her internship with the Alaska Native Tribal Health Consortium, 
and Patrick, who did his internships with the Angelina County and Cities Health District in Texas. So um, really glad to have students doing internships in so many other states across the country. So how do students learn or find out about their internships? Well, just under half of the students learned or found out about their internship through either the OPHP or through their faculty uh, advisor. Uh, while we provide a lot of information about internships in the Get a Handle newsletter and in the database and our internship coordinators, of course, talk to our students about these opportunities. <clears throat> As faculty, you still have tremendous influence on students and, their, and what they do for their internships. So thank you for serving as a sounding board to our students and please continue to do so. Even though I know that internships have now been centralized into OPHP, um, it's still really important that the students connect back to the faculty and the department for this. And, and we really appreciate that. Most students completing the MPH internship take unpaid internship. That's about 80% of our students. And so that means that only 20% of internships are paid. And, you know, that's something it's, um, you know, stu all students want a paid internship. And I, I get that and understand that. It's just those are few and far be between. We are working to try to increase that number where we can. Uh, and hopefully we will in the future. And you can see Kevin, who interned with Tul Tulane Doctors and Kelly, who um, interned with the National Senior Games Association. On this slide, um, it shows you how these internships improve students' competencies in public health. Now, on this table, you'll see the top five competencies that students selected and aligned to their internship projects. Now, before they begin their internship, we ask them to rate their internship and you can see the scale there to the right. <coughs> Excuse me. And then, um, and then immediately after their internship, we ask them to rate their level of um, competence uh, again. And you can see there's an increase um, that averages across really all of the competencies. Uh, and, and again, Instead of me showing you all of them, I'm just showing you the top five that students select. So these are really valuable experiences for our students, and it really does help them gain confidence in executing those important foundational skills that they should be getting uh, during their MPH. So feedback has been very positive on both from both the students and the preceptor evaluations of their internship experiences. And as you can see on this slide, 99% of students agree that their experience allowed them to apply public health skills and knowledge. 99% of our students agree they benefited from their experience. 97% of our students agreed their prior coursework at UAB adequately prepared them for their experience. And then 99% of preceptors agree the student was prepared, and 98% of preceptors agree the host agency benefited from hosting the intern. So I think these are some pretty good metrics that we're seeing across the board um, and feedback. Well, what tells a better story than hearing directly from the students in their own words? So we spent a lot of time this last year collecting quotes uh, from our students. And you can see here from Gabrielle, uh, she said, my experience is something that I will carry with me forward forever. Uh, I gained a deeper understanding of substance use disorder and the impact it has on the community. And she interned with JCDH. And then here are some other quotes. <clears throat> uh, a student from HPO says working as a contact tracer allowed me to use my education in real time. Uh, a population health student said the internship provided me the opportunity to work with underserved communities and affect real change through the skills I learned in my public health classes. And then an environmental health sciences student said that um, 
that you know this experience reinforced their desire to become an environmental health scientist. And that's the kind of thing we want to see moving forward. We're also collecting video vignettes from students. Um, and Kayla recently did a one for us. She completed her internship with ADPH in fall 2021. And um, she also sent us a quote that basically said the most memorable part of her MPH internship was the new connections and relationships she was able to build with the underserved uh, communities that she was working with. So we really appreciate her doing and others doing those videos. And if you're interested in seeing some of our uh, internship highlight videos, you can see those off of our website. And that website will be listed on, on the last slide of this presentation. Utam uh, completed his internship in spring 2021 at ADPH in Tuscaloosa. He was involved in uh, the operation and maintenance of drive-through COVID-19 vaccination clinics. And while he was there, he said the most memorable part of his internship was working with other interdisciplinary departments like environmental services, infectious disease department, um, emergency medical services, and the Alabama Fire College staff and other public health departments. So just so everyone knows, Utam went on uh, later to apply uh, for a full-time position with ADPH and is now working as an epidemiologist in the Southwest District. And he really um, um, credits this internship uh, with, uh, with helping him get that position because he was able to start building his network and building relationships. So ADPH knew who he was when, when he applied for the position. And then we've been collecting comments from preceptors, and here are a few. Um, Sasha, from, uh, who's the executive director of the Polycystic Ovary Syndrome uh, Challenge, um, she said that working with students from the UAB Applied Practice Experience Program, it was a great opportunity to, to engage with some of the country's top talent and to help support the next generation of public health leaders. Um, the Alzheimer's Association of Greater PA Chapter had the honor to have their first MPH intern, and they said they valued the expertise and unique perspective of our, our student brought to our work in helping to improve overall health outcomes across our communities we serve. And then the last one there is from the United Truth Nutrition Group, Mr. Carl Barnes. Um, having an MPH student work on a practical real world project with us helped bring a community health focus and expertise that otherwise would have been missed. So switching gears now, um, in uh, fall, between fall 2020 and summer 2021, we had two students um, start their practicums. And they worked on a variety of projects, and you can see here one uh, did their practicum with the South Lake Medical Center in Kenya and the other with the World Federation of Neurosurgical Societies. And Anastasia was one of those students. She was the one that worked with the World Federation of Neurological Societies. And you can see the quote here about her internship. She says she knew what she, she wanted to, to work in the field of preventative medicine long term. Uh, and the idea that she could make a difference that affects populations is mind boggling and so exciting. So when we decided to be bold and work with WHO to pass a resolution to mandate fortification of foods with folic acid to save lives and prevent disabling conditions, I was beyond ecstatic. So she's had a really wonderful experience and we're really happy for her as she completes that. So now I'm gonna switch gears and uh, uh, talk about our service learning initiatives. And unfortunately, I don't have a lot of good news here. Because of the pandemic, we were only able to do one service learning course in our school this last year, where we typically do around 10. And we'd like to have seen that increase uh, for the 2020-2021 academic year, but unfortunately that just didn't happen. Um, so I hope we only go up from here as we uh, have more courses, more credit hours, 
that includes service learning, more students enrolled in those, and more hours for those students in our community. So now let's talk about some of our service experiences and co-curricular activities in the school. First, let me start by talking about the interprofessional learning uh, experiences, or IPE. Um, we really uh, got a late start this year, and I really have to credit Dr. Kelly Swatzel for all that she's been doing in this area this year. So despite not um, having a, not, uh, any availability in 2020, uh, in spring and summer of 2021, we were still able to get 355 public health students participating in interprofessional learning experiences um, here at UAB. Um, 98 students um, participated in interprofessional team training. We had another 67 students that um, participated in the interprofessional collaboratory. We had 99 public health students participate in the poverty simulation this year, and another 91 public health students participate in SHARP, our students helping at-risk patients with nursing and medical students. So really excited about that. In addition, Kelly uh, was able to, to complete uh, the SIPES Leadership Fellows. That gives us three faculty in the school, including myself and Shantice, that have done that program. So we look forward to more of our faculty applying and completing that fellowship to help us bring more interprofessional um, um, uh, activities into our schools and available to our students. All right, let's talk about the student organization metric. <clears throat> so um, again, these numbers are a bit down uh, compared to years past, but again, COVID-19. So uh, even despite COVID, um, we had um, 26 uh, events hosted by our student organizations, and you could see our student organizations listed along the bottom of, of the slide with over 290 in attendance. Now, most of, most of these events were virtual. Um, so I think they did a pretty good job. Um, there was, in addition to those events, they had 23 educational events uh, with another 177 in attendance. So we really appreciate all their work that they did this last year to stay engaged. And hopefully we'll just see these numbers go up in the future as we are able to get back to more in-person activities across the university. Our Public Health Student Association also adopted another community partner. Uh, that was Magic City Acceptance Center. Um, you know, they had a, an event called Meet UAB SOPH Community Partner in the Magic City Acceptance Center in fall of 2020. And then, um, and then while uh, the continued COVID-19 pandemic made it really difficult to host any service events or any in-person fundraisers uh, on behalf of the Magic City Acceptance Center, uh, in spring 2021, a representative from Magic City Acceptance Center uh, served as a panelist in a virtual student-led discussion on building health equity and ways to improve health equity from a student perspective. So uh, we were really happy to see them get that done and get that executed. In addition to co-sponsoring um, the Office of Public Health Practice seminars uh, this last year, uh, PHSA hosted virtual coffee hours uh, with each of the SOPH departments and, and with the undergraduates. They did multiple virtual trivia nights, including during Welcome Week and Homecoming Week. And in spring 2021, PHA hosted various panels around topics like environmental racism, career experiences beyond academia, and health equity. So again, we were really happy to see the number of events that they were able to do. So to address many of the social issues in Alabama, uh, the UAB AmeriCorps VISTA statewide program places year-long capacity billing volunteers and service positions with community agencies to improve lives and strengthen communities uh, and to foster civic engagement. 
Uh, these volunteers in service to America are VISTAs, uh, develop and complete um, projects designed to address pressing community needs uh, to transform the Birmingham metro area and the Black Belt region of the state. So under the leadership of Dr. Amy Chatham, who is the director of the UAB AmeriCorps VISTA statewide program, since she has come into this school, um, we're um, tracking these numbers under the Office of Public Health Practice. And you, know, you can see that the number of VISTA placements has been steadily increasing each year from five in 2016 to 38 in 2021. So together, these VISTAs members have addressed issues of food security, environmental sustainability, educational equity, refugee resettlement, workforce development, LGBTQ advocacy, racial restoration, rural health and wellness, leadership development, and opioid prevention and education across the state. So we're really happy to have Amy in the school this year, and we're really looking forward to this program to continue to grow. Um, a lot of our public health students do these VISTA programs, so we're really um, looking forward to expanding these opportunities and, and really advertising those to public health students and really getting them involved in, in this program. I think it really helps the state and it gives our students some really good projects to work on. The OPHP also coordinates several activities during National Public Health Week this week and assists with promotion of even the events that we don't coordinate. So we want to thank everyone who was able to attend the annual public health address that Dr. Mark Wilson gave yesterday. Hope you were able to join that. Uh, and we have several other activities still to go this week. Uh, as you can see tomorrow, Dr. Irwin's uh, having lunch with students over at the Hills Student Center. We're having another student merchandise day tomorrow in the RPHP lobby. Um, uh, we're doing uh, the, you know, Dr. Muttner and his group in the Office of Research have the public health research poster session tomorrow. It's gonna be up on the sixth floor instead of the edge of chaos. So that was a change. So make sure you're aware of that. And then the Peace Corps information ses session is also tomorrow at Hill Student Center at 4.30 p.m. So let's talk a little bit about objective two. Um, so um, still currently we have four faculty with primary appointments in the practice track in our school. As part of this group uh, with Ann Brisenbein, Matt Eiffelt, and Julie Prescott, I can tell you that we have been really busy um, this last year. We served as PI, our co-PIs on over 13 million uh, in grants and contracts, and as investigators on another 158 million in grants and contracts. And this includes the school's largest, which is the COVID testing in K through 12 schools that Martha Wingate serves as PI on. Um, in addition to our grant and contract work, we had 24 peer reviewed publications across the four of us and taught and are co-taught the courses that are listed here. So we teach a big chunk of the core, the MPH core, um, with some additional courses across our departments. Here you can see the uh, public, the current public health practitioner affiliates that we have uh, in the school. This program recognizes the collaboration between the School of Public Health and all those working in different areas of public health practice. So affiliates may engage with SOPH in a number of ways, including as presenters, guest lecturers, mentors, and preceptors. Um, they provide perspectives on current and emerging trends and share best practices vital to the profession. Uh, appointments last for three years and can be renewed after three years and nominations are made by any School of Public Health faculty member with a primary appointment in the School of Public Health. And you can find guidance in the Faculty Affairs Committee bylaws or you can contact me for more information. We really would like you to nominate those in the community that you're working with, that you're bringing into the classroom and that are working with your students. We would really like to, to see this program 
grow over the next several years. During the academic year 2020-2021, 16 faculty in the School of Public Health served in leadership positions for community or health organizations. Uh, and you can see 24 community or health organizations. Uh, and this is like either serving on their board of directors or on an advisory council for these organizations. So uh, again, we would like to see this number grow. Um, how did we collect this information? Last September, uh, Elena sent out a faculty engagement survey that went out to all of our faculty. And we are gonna send that out again in July of this year uh, to get the 2021-2022 uh, numbers. So please make sure that you look for that and that you fill that out as completely as possible so that we can get uh, accurate numbers for what uh, our faculty are doing with these community-based organizations. So now let's talk a little bit about objective three of our strategic plan. Well, 73, this is the number of public health practitioners and community partners uh, presenting guest lecture seminars or participating in SOPH podcast series or networking events in the school this last academic year. Um, so that's a really good number. Again, would like to see this grow as we move forward and as people can more freely come back into the school. Um, and again, how did we collect these numbers? It was from the faculty survey that Elena sent out back in September. And again, we're going to redo that this July. Please make sure that you put the, you know, an accurate counting of who you're engaging with in that survey. Because again, it's not only for the metrics for our um, um, public health practice and community engagement um, pillar of our strategic plan, but this also helps with um, CEF accreditation. So I know Kelly Swatzel would really uh, appreciate you taking the time to fill that survey out. OPHP. <coughs> Sponsors or co-sponsors around 12 seminars per year. Um, we've done over 73 since we started this program back in January of 16. But you can see this last year, we did 12. We had 1,014 live attendees across these 12 seminars and an additional uh, 1,200 YouTube views of the recording. We also uh, work with Ebony Harris and Sarah Hendren to uh, bring alumni back in the school uh, uh, to do a seminar that we call Career Conversations. So if you have any ideas about alumni that you would like to see brought back uh, that you think would be particularly interesting for our students or engaging, please let Ebony and Sarah know that. Uh, we're always looking for ideas. Um, on the right side, you'll see information on our podcast series. Our podcast series really highlights emerging public health topics and issues that affect population health. And over the past year, we've developed and recorded 10 episodes with over 1,300 listens. So um, again, we've been doing that since um, 2017 and we have almost 40 episodes to date um, completed. So OPHP works with the UAB Career Center to host networking events for students. Uh, for academic year 2020, 2021, we held eight events. All of these were virtual with representatives from CDC and ADPH. These sessions served to provide uh, interested students more information on the types of programs and employment at each organization and how to apply for those. In total, over 200 students attended these Let's and Learn. In addition, both myself, Tessa Graham, and Nicole Join Mina Navavi in completing the Career Influencer Network Certificate. Um, this certificate provides the opportunity to learn how to best support students in becoming career ready and achieving postgraduate success in today's quickly evolving world of work. So if you're interested in that, I know that the Career Center would love to have more faculty from the school engaged. I'm sorry about that. I didn't mean to make us go backwards. Um, and then at the bottom, you can see we had over a, almost over 900 students um, activate their handshake account at the Career Center. 
uh, over uh, 72 on average attended each of the career fairs, and we had an average of 67 students per semester to utilize the services there at the career center. So we're really doing uh, what we can to let students know what is there and what's available to them um, as they um, you know, are beginning to look for internships and then later looking for jobs as they get near the, uh, the end of their degree program. We also continue our recognition of public health awareness months. You can see the ones listed here that we're doing. We're adding one new one in 2022, and that's in May, and that's all about cystic fibrosis awareness. So um, uh, look for more information on that in May in our Get a Handle newsletter. If you would like us to sponsor other awareness uh, campaign nights, please let us know. We'll be glad to consider that. Um, we're also continuing our sponsorships of, of films at the Sidewalk Film Festival. Uh, we sponsor movies that raise awareness of public health issues such as human rights, struggles of poverty, lasting impact of lynching in America, transgender rights, opioids and addiction. And um, this last year we sponsored Not Going Quietly, which really highlighted some issues with our health care uh, system in our country. So we were really happy to be able to do that. And as a reminder, UAB still encourages the use of laser pulse as a way to organize and promote and measure engagement and scholarship on campus and in the Birmingham community. Blazer Pulse is, a UAB, is the UAB's community engagement platform, connecting students, faculty, and staff across the campus with our partners in Birmingham and beyond. Um, any questions about Blazer Pulse and how to use that can be directed to Sabrina Hagen. Sabrina is our liaison in the school for Blazer Pulse. So let's talk just a few minutes about our workforce development initiatives. Um, first, um, there are uh, multiple centers and initiatives that focus on public health workforce development. OPHP is involved with the Region 4 Public Health Training Center, which is one of 10 regional public health training centers that are funded by HRSA located across the country. The mission of the Region 4 Public Health Training Center is to build the capacity of the current and future public health workforce, and we do that through um, uh, professional development and experiential learning uh, for students. Um, UAB serves as the Region 4's evaluation and needs assessment um, uh, technical assistant partner, and we lead the center's overall program evaluation efforts and provide technical assistance to uh, assist health departments as they go through accreditation and identify workforce and training needs. So we do a lot of workforce de development needs assessment, and here's some that we were involved in in the 2020-2021 um, academic year. More information on the Region 4 uh, Public Health Training Center can be found uh, at the website below if you're interested in that. Uh, and this are, these are just infographics that we create to track our evaluation results of our training and of our uh, uh, field placement program. Another initiative that we just started this last year is the Alabama Regional Center for Infection Prevention and Control. Um, I hope to be able to report more on our training and technical assistance numbers. We've been really busy uh, getting this off the ground. Um, and so, if, you know, these numbers will actually fall in the 2021-2022 academic year. So I'll report them, but we have been involved and were involved at the end of the academic year 2020-2021 in getting the center set up and doing a lot of informal and formal needs assessment just to determine in what the infection prevention and control needs were in the state. Um, so I look forward to telling you more about that. Uh, at next year's state of address. There are also many other uh, centers and initiatives here in the School of Public Health that do workforce development. We're going to be reaching out to all of these centers to collect numbers uh, um, from their initiatives for the SEEP accreditation purposes. 
So um, I look forward to, to telling you more uh, next year about what we learned for that as we complete our three-year self-study. Now, let me just focus just a second on our communication initiatives. Y'all know, hopefully y'all are all more familiar with our Get a Handle newsletter. In academic year 2020, 2021, we did 47 editions. Uh, we've done over 280 now since we began the newsletter. Our, um, uh, our, um, it, it's grown to about 1,500 that we send uh, individuals that we send the newsletter out to every week. Uh, we have about a 29.9% open rate for the newsletter and an 8.2% click rate, which we've been told by the university is better than, than uh, some of the university-wide newsletters um, that they send out. So we're really happy with that. Please, if you have students that have questions about seminars and events, please direct them to the Get a Handle newsletter. Again, it goes out every Monday morning and we try to keep it up date. If you have things that you want us to highlight, if upcoming events you want highlighted in the letter, uh, please email those to ophp at uab.edu. And we try to get everything that we can into the newsletter. So that's all I have for today. Um, again, anything, any questions for us, we can take a few now. Um, you can email me at, uh, at lmccormick at uab.edu, or you can email the whole group Sabrina, Mina, Elena, Tessa, Luke, all have access to ophp at uab.edu. Um, website, you will see um, you know, our practice website that's about the Office of Public Health website and our mission and goals. Uh, you see that's that first link there at the top, the first website link. And the one underneath that is for the applied practice experiences if you would like to see more information on that. So if anybody uh, has any quick questions and I'll pull up the chat. One question, how do we increase the number percent of internships that are paid? Well, if we could find a good donor that would uh, present those, um, maybe that would be great. Um, also, there are grants out there that allow you to play for applied practice experiences like the Region 4 Public Health Training Center. We have probably three or four students who get paid through the Region 4 Public Health Training Center every year. Um, so um, there are some grants that will allow that. If any of our faculty have grants that will allow um, for um, internship payments, please, our stipends as they're sometimes called, please let us know. We would love to work with you on that. Undergraduate internships, uh, I think we'll have to go back and look at that. So we are just starting to build out our applied practice experience portal for undergraduates. So right now we have MPH portal, a DRPH portal, and a portal for our MSPH students that are required to do internships. But we're working with UAB to build out a portal for undergraduate students, and we'll be able to track those. Right now, it's, you know, they fill out a form and give it to Nicole or Michelle, and, and we would have to go back and pull all of those forms. And we really honestly haven't been doing a great job at tracking those, but I hope that we do moving forward with the new portal.